Hello friends, welcome back. We are studying integration of jQuery data tables with ASP.NET MVC. Basically, we are studying server-side processing for jQuery data tables. So this video will cover how to fetch data from database through ASP.NET MVC and then bind it to jQuery data tables. This video is continuation of the last video. So if you are not aware of that part, please watch that video first. So here, to fetch a content from database, I'm going to use the concept of entity framework. So again, if you are not aware of that part, there is already a tutorial for entity framework 6. So you can refer that tutorial for more detail. So let us switch to practical part. So as you can see here on my local database server, I have already created one MyDB database and in that mydb database i have created a course table and these are the fields of this course table that is course id course name and duration and i have added few entries also total 13 entries are there so i am just keeping the name same in previous video we have created a course collection okay and here i created a course table so just not to change anything that we have configured already that's why i keep same column name and same table name okay so that is my purpose because here we are going to focus how to fetch a from fetch a data from database only i am not pre-configuring everything that we have studied in a last video so let's just, let us switch to visual studio now so here as you can see i'm using the same application that we have created while studying the jquery data table that is learn jquery data table mvc application so here everything is going to be same we are going to use same course controller we are going to use same index view nothing will change except this get courses method okay so now currently this get courses method is initializing your collection with fixed data but instead of this we are going to fetch this data from database that is the only change needed here otherwise everything will remain same means your load data method remains same your index action method remains same everything will remain same okay now the next step is to add the edmx file for entity framework so right click over here say add say new item then after you have to select visual c sharp from left left hand side pen and then after you have to select ADO.NET NTD data model. You can give any name to your model. Say MyDB. I am just giving the same name as of my database. Then click on add. Now the next step is you have to choose the model content. Here basically we are focusing on database first approach. There are various approach for entity data model. You can create code first approach also, or you can go for model first approach also. But here I'm using database first approach because my database is already ready. Now in the next step, you have to specify the connection details, which is nothing but your database name, server name, username, password, etc., etc. Here you have to create a new connection. So click on new connection first. Then after specify the server name. This is nothing but your PC name slash SQL Express. Okay. Once you selected this, then you have to specify or select the database name. Basically, I am using my local database server. That's why this name will appear here. Otherwise, whatever the server name you have to mention it here again authentication type and using is window authentication now the database that i have created is mydb database just click on test connection now it is succeeded say okay now once you added a new connection here it will specify the name for your connection string also you can change it basically this connection string will appear in web.config file then click on next then here you have to specify which entity framework you are going to use. So we are going to use the latest framework that is 6.x. So keep your internet connection on because this will download entity framework in your application. Then click on next. Then here from that options you have to choose the tables. 
so we have only single table that is course table just select it from it again rest of the things are already explained in entity framework video tutorial so for more details you can refer that tutorial then click on finish once you click on finish it will try to install entity framework in your application so it may take some time now entity framework also get installed and as well as your edmx file is also get created so if you observe here if you expand this part you will find the main db context file which name is my db entities so this file or this class will represent your database which is inherited from db context class and for your table one course entity or course class get created and this course id course name and duration are nothing but your column name so these are the properties representing your column name now we have to do one more thing there might be a problem because we are having two classes one is this class and another is this class so we are going to delete this old class so there will be no confusion so just right click over here and delete the model class that we have created in the previous video now go to course controller actually here it is showing this error also we have to remove this namespace now since it is no longer required and as i told you this method will going to change right so let us remove this code now first of all we have to create a instance of our db context class so our db context class is name class name is my db entities so just create a instance of this class so here i'll say my db entities say db is equal to new my db entities okay and then after this class has this courses property this courses property will have the collection of courses that we have entered in our database okay so that's it so i'll just collect this value in one i enumerable collection or you can directly return it say lst course say equal to db courses and then after return this collection that's it everything will remain as it is except this method okay now let us run our application i'm just opening my index view of course controller so see all your data get loaded now if you observe here carefully you can see that processing part also okay or what will i do i'll just stop my application will temporarily halt this particular part using threading so system dot threading dot head dot slip let us slip it for 2 seconds okay i'm just trying to show you this processing option here we set this processing option true so once you set this processing option true what happens that i'm trying to show let us save it this processing shows okay again i refresh my page okay it shows processing if you set that processing option true then that processing message will appear so that's it we bind with bind our data table database values right it's quite easy so from next video onwards what we are going to see we will apply the sorting then we will apply or we will introduce searching we will apply 
pagination also and we'll do this all the thing step by step thank you for watching